one of the things about having a group of guys that you talk to about like just guy stuff and that could be anything that could be success that could be sex that could be how you use your body like there, there's so many things that happen when men come together and talk that it's just it's awesome it, but we find this like evolution of thought of experience of a truth that's always been there it's nothing new but just us voicing it and i think that that's the path of every man every woman to any living human being is to find the truth of your life it's not going to be anything new it's stuff people have always been doing but we have to talk to each other we have to build a community in order to access it and it's not just a community of people being superficial it's a community of people being real all right, people really, really putting out their experiences and, and focused on trying to be a little bit better. And that doesn't take much. You know, that just takes a little bit of intention and desire and some people coming together. And some awesome things were said because we were talking about sex. We were talking about a man's experience going to another country where women were aggressive. Women wanted him. Women wanted men and were not afraid to show it. And, and it was just such an eye-opening thing. And see, every single man who cares about his sexuality and exploring that needs to experience this, okay? So if that's not your goal, that's fine. You can still be a person and fulfilled in life without that. But I think this is a very common thing for men to be like, man, I want to know what it's like to feel like a man. To feel like a man with dick and balls, with my sexual intention, to not have it be bad, to be fulfilled, to have that ambition behind it, to see how it plays into my life, to see how it plays into my identity and all these different things. And this natural, natural urge somehow gets repressed in a lot of westernized cultures just because, man, I think we overthink sex and we overcomplicate it and thus making it abnormal. So because sex is seen as this abnormal or exaggerated thing, we seek it out in those ways. You know, hence the pickup industry. I mean, look at that. In order to talk to a woman, you have to be all these things first. That's just so nuts. In order to talk to a woman, you need to be a human being. You know, in order for her to like you or have an experience with you, you need to be able to like see her as a human being too. And as well as a woman. But an interesting, interesting thing happened, okay? So this guy goes to another country. These women want him and it's like, man, this is so crazy. It doesn't have to be so complicated. Why am I overthinking these things? And he said this awesome line that Jim actually was just talking about it on the call. And he said, when the roles of men and women are defined, it just becomes so much easier. Things just fall into place. Okay. Now, us in westernized culture go, oh man, we're going to, you know, put boundaries around everybody and force people to live in certain ways. The interesting thing is, is when we've rebelled against that so much of like how you can be a man and you're going to do this and I'm not going to be defined by how other people think of me, how you're going to be a woman and how to talk to a woman needs to be outside of this template that fits in. Through that, we've actually put way more boundaries and restrictions over the natural things that we feel. Everybody's an individual, but we need to recognize what we are first, you know, First, we're human beings. If we start thinking we're something else, you know, if we start thinking we're uh, another animal or another life form, we, we really lose a lot of the human essence. And when we start to realize, okay, human beings have these consistencies, you know, we have two arms, we have two legs, we generally have those at least, we have a head, we think a lot, we're very social, our behaviors are, are in these ways, you know, and when we try and break from that, we really make it impossible for us to be a human being. And when we look at men and women, there are certain things that happen. And this is another thing too. Okay, when we look at the filter of anything natural without experience, we fuck it up. When we look at sex and how we connect with people, men and women without experience, we fuck it up because we look at it through this absolute distortion. Okay, and then we start coming up with these rules. You know, men are like this, women are like this, but we haven't really connected. Or maybe we've had sex, but we haven't had successful relationships. Or we haven't really let ourselves go in the bedroom. We haven't let ourselves go with our emotions. We haven't let ourselves go with our, our relationships with people, you know, and how we interact. And so we have these definitions of how other people do it and how it's supposed to be when really nobody's talking about that truth, that truth which has always existed with men and women, with humanity, that you're just trying to get a piece of in your life and we block it and we fuck it up, man. 
When those roles of men and women are defined and nobody cares about them, we could just be men and women, it's fucking awesome. Why? Because we're sexual beings. We're, we're people that want to communicate. We want to feel good with each other. We want to be liked. And when we get rejected, it sucks. But that rejection just feels bad in a different way of like, oh, she didn't like me. Okay, I can move on to the next. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit sad. But it doesn't mean all the things that we say when we haven't had the experience or when we're bound by these cultural roles, which that rejection then says we're useless. We failed. We haven't done it. We're going to have to do it again. This is a, a repetitious cycle in life. And that sort of rejection, man, that sort of rejection only gets felt when we have a society that is really complex with a lot of definitions and a lot of rules. But when we move into a simpler situations, that sort of rejection is very different. So it's so it's so interesting what we've done to sex and what we've done to overcomplicate it, what we've done to the roles of man and women. Just that fuck it all up. So, man, every single man, I believe this. If you want to get better with sex, you have to have an experience where you have a lot of sex and you get to see the full range of women. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fuck it up. You're going to step over the line. And other times you're going to be too passive and be behind the line. You're going to be that that, you know, beta dude or that nice guy or whatever it is that you don't want to be or it's supposed to be a bad thing. But you need to experience that. Why? Because you need to realize the the that this language that's happening that is so natural and such a part of it. So man, I, I, I honestly don't trust a man talking about sex that is trying to, you know, tailor his words so he doesn't sound bad to, you know, women or he's trying to, and we hear this a lot in the dating industry where it's like, guys are like, it's okay to be sexual, but you can't fall into the patriarchy or you can't, you know, you know, women need to be seen as beautiful creatures. And there's like this, This big, big emphasis on that. Let me just tell you something, man. I love women. I see women as absolute, total beauty. I love it. I chase it in so many different ways. I chase the love, the affection they give me, the the sex they incite in me. But I also know that every single woman can be a total whore. Every single woman can love a dick. Every single woman can give herself to her full range of sexuality and has that capability in her. I don't see that as a bad thing. I see that as a part of her power, her choice, her options, what she does. But man, that's a reality of her. If you take that out of a woman and you don't think that that's possible, then man, you have taken away what has been some of the most part of the most powerful attributes of femininity. Again, you know, we have to see women as women. We have to see men as men. And that's the way that we're going to come together. You know, the, the beauty of it is, is when you're around a part of your life or a culture that sees sex in a different way or an event or something like that, you realize that it's not so bad to just want to fuck. It's not so bad to just use your dick. It's not so bad to get a woman to worship your dick. It's not so bad to to have control in sex. It's not so bad to have power in sex. It's not so ha- bad to be disempowered through sex or whatever it is. That all these things are a part of a flavor of a language that is within you, of a truth that is within, within you that you have to find. And it's not bad. It has a voice for a specific meaning. And if it doesn't, get voiced, then it becomes repressed. And when you put layers of things on something, whether those are beliefs, whether that's cultural boundaries, or it's actual confinement in a relationship or whatever it is, then those those feelings, those feelings of, I want to get fucked. I want to fuck somebody. I want to, uh, you know, I want to tie somebody up or I want them to tie me up or I want, you know, to, to have all power taken away from me or I want to see what it's like to have a woman's face change and totally submit to me or I want to totally submit. If you take that around, what does it become? It becomes there's a part of me that's bad for thinking of it. And there's a part of me that has to have it. What can only be the result of that? Think about that. What can only be the result of that? There's a part of me that thinks of sex in a bad way. Or my expression doesn't even have to be sex. There's part of me that thinks of my expression in a bad way. And there's a part of me that man, it, it, it has to be has to be repressed. It has to have layers on it. It has to be confined. It must break. And when you break things, that stops communication. You know, what is the difference between an aggressive act and an assertive act? 
What is the difference between asserting who you are and violence? The difference in it is, is choice is taken out of the equation. If I'm assertive or I'm aggressive with somebody, I may tell somebody something, but I give them the choice to reply and decide who they are and how they are and those things. If I move towards violence, I take away that choice. This is how it's going to be. And there's different degrees of it, of course. You know, you show up to a job, your boss may say, this is how it's going to be. You know, that's a lower level of it. You know, it wouldn't be something which is like this really heavily harmful, violent thing, but choice is taken away. Human beings love choice, man. You give people the choice, you give people the option, and things change. But if you take away that choice completely, it's relying upon force. And when force gets to a degree where it's painful and it's repressive and it's sustained and it's forced, it becomes violence. Think about that and how we treat our sexuality, which is mired down by I'm doing something wrong and mired down by I can't do it and has to be regulated and repressed and defined in all these different ways. Think about that. Think about how we repress ourselves with sex. Think about how we set ourselves up for breaking, for force and for violence with something that is so natural and something that is a truth, a purity. Man, all those fantasies that you have, all those things that could be illegal. All those things that could be just these harmful, wicked things that if the public heard about would absolutely judge you. But if you give yourself an opportunity to go, you know what? What if I'm not bad for that? You know, the typical thing would be an example of a rape fantasy. Men and women have these things, you know, on both ends of it. They may want to rape, they want to be, be raped or whatever, but nobody really wants that. They don't want that violent act of disempowerment. They want to be able to feel what it's like to, to let go to that degree, right? And when we think about that and just say, well, wait a minute, this is okay for me to have this thought. I'm going to have this thought. I'm going to have it privately or with a close group of people that I trust, and I'm not going to judge myself for it. You know, it's not going to be bad. And let me, let's, let's take the cultural repression off of it of how we can have that, how we can enact it and what it could be. And let's say you go through that experience with your partner. And again, you walk out of that experience and go, you know what? I'm not bad for it. Oh, you know what? Culture may repress that, but I kind of get where it works within the lines of it. And, and the experience kind of guides you. You know, whereas a lot of people have those different things and we get into these secret sexual fetishes of people where they only do something, but they think it's bad and they have to go and do it in this discreet, you know, whatever environment, um, you know, it, God, what does that build in us? What does that build? You know, it's funny. My friend, uh, there's a location in Austin. There's a bar. It's called Hotel Vegas. And there's this rumor. I don't know how true it is, but so I was told. But there's an upstairs to it that's closed off. OK. And, you know, the public isn't allowed in there. And it's this old hotel. It's this really small hotel that they turned into kind of a cool bar in Austin. And my friend went up into the bar and he videotaped or he went up into the upstairs and he videotaped it. And it apparently, it was an, an old brothel. It was an old whorehouse. OK. On the east side of Austin. That's the story that's told. It's just the shithole, dirty, fucked up rooms, really small spaces. It's a hotel, you know, it's a hotel that's like by the hour hotel type thing, right? And I looked at it and I quoted on his little video of it. I was like, man, that's the kind of brothel I want to be in. That's the kind of place. And you know what's funny is if you go to different brothels or places around the world, they have that quality. They have that space of like, you know, fit as many people in as possible, small rooms. Uh, it's going to be turn and burn, all that sort of stuff. And in you know, those were all done for whatever weird economic reasons of prostitution, but they, they had this odd kind of dirty quality to it. And so you have this belief, I'm doing something wrong. I'm seeing a hooker. This is bad. Or maybe you're the hooker and it's like, I'm, I'm working in this place and this is a bad thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not good for it. Right. And then there's this other side of it going like, you know, society is saying, this is not a right thing. We do it in this private secret spot and there's something that feels gross and disgusting about it and there's something that feels good. There's something that is this language of like, oh my God, I'm doing this bad thing. I should be in the dirty area. I should be living out my dreams and fantasies in this polluted, you know, yada, yada, yada. And there's something that feels good and disgusting about it. And you talk to people who have like major, major sex addiction, drug addiction, whatever. And you start to love those little things, those dirty, bad places where you can, you can 
enact and reenact and have your moments of just depravity or whatever it is. You know, for a lot of people who do a lot of drugs, the smallest room in the house, hoarding, building up everything, wanting more. You're stuck in the bathroom. You know, people are knocking on the door. You say, oh, it's just going to take a few more minutes. It's going to take a few more minutes. And you build this and it's just like you're alone and there's nothing there. And you walk out of that. You walk back into the real world somehow. You know, whether you just put your suit on and tie on after you're done fucking a hooker or whatever, and you walk out of that building and you walk away with that, that shame. Or let's say you're, you're a drug addict and you're a junkie doing whatever you get clean and you somehow get out of that phase where you're not stuck in the bathroom, you know, looking at the cracks in the doors all paranoid out of your mind. And you walk out of there and you go, man, fuck, man, there's a part of me that's bad and, and that I like those things and I want those things and da 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 da. And then there's a part of me that or there's a part of society which would just look at frown upon that that has to be hidden and man let me tell you something because i've had experiences of both of those things that i just described and now because i've had those experiences and i've worked through a lot of those the the shame the guilt the judgment out of it i don't think i'm bad and i look at that and i go man i kind of like those areas man i kind of like those things and the reason why i fell in such a weird fantasy ritualistic of behavior of it was because I thought I was bad and doing something wrong and I very well might have been, but there was also a good part of me in there too. And there's a part of me that goes, you know what? Society thinks it's bad, but, but I understand it now. I understand why I did those things. I understand why those things happen in life. And God, it's such a cool, beautiful thing. Same thing is, is when I meet a woman, beautiful, great woman that I can respect and I'm just going to quote what the Jesus Tiger wrote is when I can see a beautiful, intelligent woman that God, man, just has all the things that I want. And I can look at her and just say, you know what? If I wanted to state intent, we could be fucking. That's a feeling to feel. That's how you should see people in front of you, if you're attracted in that way. That's how you should see women. And the only way you're going to understand that is to go for it and live it for a period of your life where you can know what women are, know what a man is, and just realize every woman has inside of her a beautiful orgasm, a beautiful sexuality that will come out in rage and in sweetness and in pleasure and in beauty. And you have to recognize that she has all those things so that you can see the absolute individuality and uniqueness within that. And if you don't, You've put her into a box that she's already put around herself that was placed there by her parents, by society, by all this other bullshit that keep her fucking locked up from noticing the fucking power within her.